Hello, and welcome to TFLP Microcasters. This is Lucas, and I am joined by the usual crew, uh, Christian and Anna. What's up? Good evening. So we're, uh, we, we actually have a new mold this week, so that's exciting. Well, I guess we did last week, too. It's yeah. kind of a new mold, too. So. He dances. Uh, so, yeah. Kind of dances. Fresh, uh, fresh new stuff. So, not a repaint. Yep. So a tonight person. we're doing double dealer. Three. Although I think we did talk about it at length on um, Ouch My Wallet. Like, was it two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that? Two and a half weeks ago. So, well, not like I watched Ouch My Wallet. So, well. Oh, you totally should. It was fun. So, trying to decide which side I want to be by. <laughs> Very yeah, I think wasn't I think Rick and the Rooster and was that was that a couple? I think that was that was Rick's thing. So that yeah, was that all was, one was show, yeah. yeah, yeah all one show that. I did not watch, but I know about because it's infamous. So let's <laughs> talk about Double Dealer. So so yeah, Double Dealer. I don't, I don't know which uh, which one we're gonna talk about first. So where did, just, just, I always like to make you guys tell a little bit of history. Where did Double Dealer appear in the, in the fiction again? Japan. Japan. Yeah, he's in Headmasters. Okay, so. And I'm sure he's in Marvel someplace. But he had a U.S. release of the toy, right? Of course. He did. He's an 88 yeah. figure. So people had him, they just didn't get to see him in the animation. Correct. In the U.S., I mean. Obviously, yeah. people in Japan knew him in the animation. Okay. Yeah, except he was a, a double clouder over there. So you told me before, he's got this weird deal, perhaps a double deal. He does have this weird deal. Where he's two people. He's not two people, but he's definitely two agents. He plays for two he's, different teams, right? He plays for two teams. Yeah, just like Punch and Counterpunch do, except Double Dio takes it a step further, and he has associates on each side. So we'll talk is. about the associates. Yeah. That's Maybe. not... Maybe. So, yeah. would you have been upset if he would have if, if he would have came with a mercenary badge instead of the Autobot and Decepticon badges? No... I mean, I've got stickers for that, so it doesn't bother me so much. Yes, because it was done well on this figure. The Autobot and Decepticon badges. I like the way they did it. I kind of actually like that mercenary thing. Like, I kind of hope they really play into it. And because a lot of the characters that are mercenaries are, like, pretty neat characters. Like, um, I'm trying to think of, um, like, Deadlock is one that I really want a new version of. Um, be cool. I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of some of the other ones that were like in the card game. Um, but but Lucas, I'm not a mercenary. Probably is one. We're talking about me. That's a double the other side. Lockdown is another one. Yeah, of course, from the toy line, Deadlock was exhausted. a mercenary in the card game or not? I can't remember. Deadlock should be a Decepticon, but I don't know anything about the card game, so whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I had to go back through the cards. So I know Nightbird was as well, but of course, like, geez, it is, they made a Decepticon. You know, they kind of thought about that, like, after the card game came out, so. Yeah. Okay, so talking about this toy. Yeah, the toy. So let's start with the truck mode because I don't want to start with the bird mode because I've been told this is more positive. So let's start with the truck. Here, so here is the truck a mode. Tank earlier, is it officially a truck or a tank? I would say it's, it's a, a tank. Truck. I mean, I don't know. It looks like a we tank to me. It a tank. I just didn't want to fight about it. It was, it was good when you guys said it out loud because one of you said it's a tank, the other one said it's a truck, and it was lovely. Nice. It's I'm a truck. Take that. Yeah, it's a missile truck, right? It's a, yeah, it's a missile truck. I spent yeah. like. Probably a good like 15 minutes on the internet trying to find a military missile truck that looked like that. I found a few that were close enough I could convince myself that at least he was inspired by. 
I think Russia has them. I think that's what it's from. Yeah, there's some relatively close ones. Oh, that would make sense. Yeah, he's he's not exact for <laughs> sure. Like he's definitely not like a lot of the Earth Rise figures where it's like you can tell exactly what vehicle he's supposed to be. But he's he's inspired by. <laughs> So, and his hands uh, at the top get to hold the accessories, so... Um, I think that's clever. I think it's nice. I think, like, one of the things that's nice about, like, this figure in general is <laughs> just the amount of accessories. Like, it feels like a much more substantial, like, figure than the other leaders that we've gotten recently. Like, I don't know if Ultra Magnus might be similar. I don't know. I'd have to weigh this one versus... Uh, versus Ultra Magnus, but this definitely comes with like a ton of accessories um, because it has the uh, the missile that splits apart, uh, and then these little uh, accessories. There's like the whatever artillery that's on on here as well, um, and so I I don't know. I feel like that I'm getting my money's worth um, w with this figure. So, and I think that like if they hadn't included all this stuff, it wouldn't have looked as is nice. It's a bit of a playset. Like, it really does. I don't know. It's just a kind of a fun level of accessories. Now, a friend of mine recently argued with me that the number of our accessories that he has borders on parts forming, which I will say that there's one part in particular that feels a little parts for me. But overall, I think it's a fun decision the way they built them for the most part. I agree with that, too. And it, it conquers the Astro Train syndrome where Astro Train's car, like his extra like car that he carries around behind him, uh, has it carries a substantial amount of plastic and then it has a whole bunch of guns too, which is cool. And then Double Dealer takes that and puts that car weight into the actual figure. Yeah. Which I definitely like better. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Like Lucas said, it feels more substantial than anything we've gotten lately. I actually like the truck mode. I think it's a fun thing. Yeah. It doesn't it doesn't look right with other Earthrise figures because it doesn't really look like it looks closer to like a siege level of approximation, whereas most of the Earthrise stuff is like, hey, it's an Earth vehicle, it's just not licensed. This one's more of a like inspired by an Earth vehicle is this missile truck. It's still cool. It just I, mean, I, I don't feel like it fits quite as well. Uh, uh, like reminiscent of the G1 figure yes. in general. Yeah. Like that, that's where I think that like, if you're going to say that, like, I think with Earthrise, the fact that this is very close to its G1 counterpart, whereas like a lot of the other Earthrise figures are the same way. So is my mic volume any better? Like, I know people are saying my mic's super loud. I've been trying to turn it down to see if that it was loud earlier. You seem normal now. Okay. I don't know. My like system keeps automatically upping the volume, and I, I need to figure out how to like well, stop doing that. Anyway, on the sp on the spectrum of Earthrise alt modes, Anna, would you say this is like closer to Skylinks as far as realism? Uh, yeah, probably a little bit below even. Okay. Like, are we just talking about the shuttle, or are we talking about the shuttle and the thing under it? The shuttle and the thing under it. Okay. If we're including the thing, then yeah, it's closer to Skylinks. Yeah. If we're just talking about the shuttle, then he's way below Skylinks. I think that shuttle's decent. Yeah, it is. But they're not. Neither one of them are terribly far off from like real. But then you have stuff right. like hoist and grapple that are like, oh, that's clearly an Earth car. Got it. Like, there's some times when we'll get an alt mode, and I'll be like, ooh, that doesn't look like anything, and it's awful. But this time, it's more like we get an alt mode, and it's like, it doesn't really look that much like the actual truck it's based on, but it's still fun. It's a fun toy truck robot thingy. Yeah. But I think, Enjoy again, it. like, it, it, like, it depends on what it's homaging, you know. Right. It, you kind of have this... Like, like Skylinks and Double Dealer are both based on characters that came out, like, was it 87, 86? I'm trying to think, like, when they uh, came out. 88. But 88. Like, when, when, like, those characters came out, like, they were not quite Earth Mode. Like, the very initial right. figures, G1 figures, were all, like, Earth Mode, whatever. And then as you got further in, like, the ones that Hasbro kind of designed themselves were, were not necessarily 
you know, based on Earth vehicles or, or whatever. So, I mean, I think that that's part of it. And, I mean, honestly, for me, I mean, I just love, like, when they actually homage the the G, uh, the G1 figures, but, like, give it articulation and, you know, like, the deco's really nice and, and all that yeah. as well. But it's not stickers. It's, like, actual painted on detail. Um, that That's this. I mean, that's exactly this. Right. Exactly this. So there's a couple things I do want to say. So when you guys turn him into the truck mode, you mentioned that the the guns plug into his hands, or the guns and the missile Mm -hmm. thingy plug into his hands. Were you able to get those to really lie flat? I noticed that Lucas's are kind of curved upwards a little bit. They don't really lie flat, do they? Not really. No, they're they're just a little bit up. It's it's fine. I just wanted them. I just wanted them to face forward so he could shoot stuff. But <laughs> you're shooting things up in the air, so yeah, you have to aim upwards a little bit. So like an anti on. anti-aircraft. Uh, yeah. If you sneak up on up on him on the ground, he's doomed. Yeah, probably. Then the other thing is that missile can actually like it moves, so you can move it into a launch position, which is kind of right. cool to me. Like, it can actually go pretty high up. And I feel like the way that ramp is built, you're supposed to put the ramp out and then have the missile study on the ramp and shooting yes. backwards. Exactly. I think that, that'd be fun. Yeah, but like, that's pretty much it, supposed to be like this. Right, but if you looked at him from overhead right now, you could see his face, which is really funny to me. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever. But do you mean, are you really going to fly your helicopter over him and look down and look down at a missile? They'd be like, there's a robot face. Right. It's just funny to me. But I think it's a fun truck mode. It's It's got a lot of color. It's got good colors because he's full of good colors. Yeah. And it's a fun toy to play with. I did have to, I did have to defy the instructions a little bit to get him to roll, though. Because when I followed the instructions exactly, it didn't have you fix the wings. Because the way he's packaged, the wings are too bunched up for him to roll. So I had to defy the instructions. Yeah. Isn't that the way, I mean... No, they're, they're a little more bunched up when it's packaged. It's intuitive oh. to fix it. I was going to say, I don't know. I, I didn't actually follow the instructions, so that was... Well, I wanted to follow them to see how good they were, because I kept hearing he was complex, like more complex than most of the figures we get, so I wanted to see how good they were. And I followed him to get to truck mode. I was really happy with how easy it went, and then he didn't roll, and I was like, darn, just a little bit, a little bit so... of a disappointment. So Catherine was asking if he f- connects to any of the MicroMaster bases. Like the very back ramp does have a connection point, um, so you can use that if you want to connect to other bases or whatnot. Or ramps. Or if you, ramp or if you have like a hundred sl- slither fangs and you know whatever that can connect to it. Yep, he's part of it, which is cool. So truck mode is fun. Truck mode is fun. Should we go to bird mode? I have a bird. Oh, look at you. He's he's a vulture, technically. Here's his vulturian head. Good. The head is cool. I really the like head that is head. pretty cool. He could have used like a paint detail here and there, but I'm sure if you really need that, your toy axe will take care of that for you. But this is what he looks like. And it's kind of just the truck mode upside down <laughs> with the wings flipped out which is fine i mean it, it does the thing it's how g1 did it and this is how this one does it and what's really nice is that that ramp piece that lucas was showing off earlier does have sculpted tail feathers oh there you go so it's it's you know it it serves all the purposes but here's the uh the hands from the truck mode holding the accessories again now they're on the bottom and facing the other way um yeah it's a bird it does both yeah. things these wings are cool they're articulated uh, this way, this way, then the end is articulated for a transformation. Yeah, I can. Go ahead. I have, one more. I have a surprise. If you look underneath, here's his friend. There's <laughs> Mach. Oh, there you go. There is. And he has the so engine plugged in into him, so he's more of a power master. I did. I did plug the engine to him. It's uh, a piece that's kind of hidden in double dealers bot mode and we'll show you that when we get there but it's this little tiny piece that connects to the five millimeter peg on knock and scar so you just go loop 
Because they were power masters, which were typically like engines you plugged in that kind of jumped out of people. So because this incarnation is tapes, sticking that on, it makes it a little more like the original, which I think is a really cool nod. And so for that function that Anna mentioned earlier, Nock is the Decepticon power master, which in G1 would turn the truck into the bird mode. So the bird is the Decepticon mode. And as far as anyone on the Decepticon team knows, it's a bird dude that turns into a missile truck. That's it. That's Double Dealer. But that's not true. He has a secret third mode. <laughs> he has a so secret awkward. third mode. But the bird, like, I don't know. Did either of you ever have the G1 version of this toy? No. No. Need to, it should have had Rob on the show because he, he yeah, has the G1 version. I wish I could see a comparison. Because so just looking at pictures, I feel like the G1 bird is actually a little better. So just, like, this bird doesn't really look great as far as, you know, being a truck that's upside down and the legs kind of get lost. So I'm not really... Hey, I can see if Rob's around, if he can join the show real quick. That's okay, we're fine. I was say, if you need, you need comparisons here, Anna. I do not need the comparisons. The only thing we'll learn from the comparison is I don't like the bird mode on this figure. Bird. Which is fine, because I've honestly been going through my head thinking of repaints you could do for this figure that don't use the bird mode. That just completely skip it. And I think that's more fun. Right, exactly. That one. That's what I want to see. This they repaint it as, it's screw the bird. (laughs) Yeah, I'm kind of curious, like, if they are going to... I mean, they'll probably repaint, remold this into something... But you, you have to wonder, like, you know, like, say, for example, like, 8-Face, like, we kind of figure, like, oh, there's a Snapdragon coming, you know, because they have similar engineering. But, like, what what would be the similar figure uh, to this that would, like, be able to use similar engineering? Do you... I just, I just said it. Oh, sorry. Cybertron Defense Red Alert. Alert. And he Did would he go with three the hot shot we already got. No, he just has two modes. Yeah. All the other missile trucks only have two modes, but he would stalker. work really well for that red alert. Like this Dude. is his body type right here. Yeah. yeah, he would look phenomenal as red alert. You know, I would really like to have a two pack of that and scatter shot from Impactor. I still want that. And you know, who cares if we get it and it's like now red alert has a bird mode. Who cares? Okay, great. Ignore it. <laughs> Turn him into the bird Dude, blood. you know there's going to be some the dude on, on social media and TFW that are just complaining, you know, that the figure, like, why couldn't we get the real figure? Like, why do we have to get a repaint? Have a bird mode. <laughs> Make a piece of fiction where Red Alert has to you know, get mutated to blend in on the beast planet. That's whatever. That would be super cool. I'm Although there was, that, there was that leak about Power Master Megatron. Yeah, and that's that what Randall was, was saying. Oh, yeah, that's what this is. I totally that, forgot about that. That leak. never got made, though, right? That was just a like, prototype for pictures. But it only, oh, it, back in G1, yeah, that never got made. Yeah, I thought so. It was uh, concept. Yeah, it was literally just him in Megatron colors. Yeah, which is fine. It could be interesting. I don't have a problem okay. with it. So I feel Red like Randall was saying they could be uh, Machine Wars Soundwave as well. Like sure. that yep. Soundwave is kind of a smaller figure, though. Is the only thing. I mean, like the missile. Like you could put that missile accessory with something else. If but yeah, like I agree. Like the shape is very group, similar. I'd, I'd rather have Stalker, but whatever. Either one yeah. or both. Yeah. Any of those would work. I, I do like the Red Alert better because we already got Hot Shot, so I think it would just be cool to have them together. Yep. And as much as I'm not really a Unicron Trilogy fan, I actually do want more Unicron Trilogy updates. Because I do think some of those designs are cool. I just didn't really like the toys back then. So I think new versions of them would be totally fine. Well, Christian, let me ask you, because you're you're the Unicron Trilogy guy. Um, Would you want, like, repaints or slight remolds that aren't 100% accurate to Unicron Trilogy, but are, like, close enough? Or does it annoy you not to get a super accurate, like, if, if they were to repaint this or something? I was really happy to get that hot shot, and I was really happy to get the Galaxy Upgrade Optimus, although it's not better than the original. 
Mm-hmm. No, I agree. With so you I'd there. rather have something along the lines of Hotshot where it's not an exact update, but you can make it work because then it blends into the new aesthetic rather than Galaxy Upgrade Optimus, which is supposed to be an update of the original, but doesn't do as well. And then Hotshot people... simultaneously upgraded the old Hotshot figure and the Hound Mold because it made them both better, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I know there was a lot of people, well, when I say a lot of people, a few people complaining that it wasn't 100% accurate to Hotshot is the reason I was asking, so. Yeah, for me, I prefer the Hotshot approach over the Galaxy Upgrade approach. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, a lot of times with my generation's figures, like, I don't mind if they change it a little bit, you know, to give us, a, you know, some type of update or whatnot. And, like, I feel like usually with these, like, they make them in pretty neat colors as well. So like that's that's the thing is is just like if you're just a crazy color collector, you know, it's it's neat to see that stuff. These are this is guy's already good colors. True, true. Yeah. I love the colors of this guy. But um I will say one thing I want to commend Christian on is he literally has a version of this guy to display in the bird mode. And you may be the only human on Earth who does that. I needed one for the Autobot shelf and one for the Decepticon. You did. So you did. Yeah. I commend you. Bird Personally, bird I'll bird probably bird. never put him in bird mode again because I just I don't like how it looks. Okay. I think a lot of people have mentioned that Transformers always struggles with birds. Most most of the birds are not so great. Skylinks. Skylinks is the best bird by not being a real bird. Trying to I think, think of like, a, monster yeah. bird is good. I think the um the clone bird is okay. Yeah. Original Air Razor wasn't terrible. I like Transmetal Air Razor. Transmetal Air Razor was less of a bird though. More yeah. Like me. I mean, I will say in general, like I feel like this toy is much better than the old generations toy that we got like whatever oh, that right. was i was oh, just actually, not I a big fan of that, that fig that toy like i didn't really like the blitzwing that much and and my big problem with that old figure was is that the shoulders didn't lock in and so it just annoyed the crap out of me like i felt like i could never get it to solidly like form together because it was made of this like mushy plastic yeah the wings they, uh, do feel like that same mushy plastic, but the wings aren't joints. So right. who, yeah, cares? Like, who cares? I mean, they're, they're designed to be flexible, and they flex, which is great. And uh, they don't do anything important other than be wings. So all all good. And they, I think it's they honestly, it's made of. but they have the same color as great bubble gum, so they look like they'd be delicious. <laughs> they do. They look good. Look at these things. You can chow down on them. I'm sure they'll take teeth impressions really well. I'm sure they will. They'll look nice. They'll look like my toys I had when I was a kid. Yeah. All right, so, robot mode? Yeah, I'm trying to transform it without breaking mine. Let's see if I can do it. Well, best of luck. So, remember that time I told you that there was a suspicious part in uh, the Power Master engine part? It lives right here on his, like, abs. But you just take it off, drop it on the ground, and here it is. I, my hands are too big. Yeah, it's not very loud in there. But it does have engine detailing, which is cool. Um, I'm going to actually take mine off and put it on knock, because surprise, I had him inside the chest compartment the whole time. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine that you can do that. So overall, like, I, I joked with the guys last week after we did Sky Lakes that I would say I like I like this figure if I put my hands over the legs like this. I really like this. If I put my hands over the top of the body like this, I hate it. And the overall, I'd say it's pretty okay. It looks like he's supposed to. Yep. I don't think it's anything, like, spectacular, but yep. it does the job which is something I do appreciate. 
And again, yeah. still feels hefty, which is good. He's definitely hefty. Like, I yeah. am, there's no part of this figure where I sit down and said, like, he's overpriced or he's not a good leader or anything like that. Like, all my criticisms aside, I think this definitely feels worthy of being a leader class figure. Even though he's not massive compared to Voyagers, but he's still a little bigger. He's definitely, okay. like... <laughs> he's bigger. Okay, he's close here to the Ultraminus, right? Size-wise. What's that? Close enough to who? Ultramagnus. Oh, Ultramagnus. Uh, yeah. The other big leader. Let me grab... Where's my Ultramagnus? They're the only two big leaders we've got in. Uh, Galaxy Prime. Oh, it's the same. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, he is... You know, he might actually be a little bit shorter. Okay. That's kind of what I expected was a little bit shorter. Just slightly. Not a lot of that. Pretty similar, though. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. So he's a good size, hefty figure. He's got... Um, He's got modern modern articulation. I will say mine's legs are weak enough that they really won't do a lot of posing for me. I'm sure if I tried, I could tighten the legs up. Right now they're pretty loose. Um, Christian, you know, are, he, are either one of your copies like that? Mine isn't. Even when I, I like broke it. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Like, what's loose on your legs? Oh, uh, the hips. He's heavy, so he doesn't really like. He'll tip over. Like if the rat, the, the ratchets and the hips, or the yeah, I guess it was the ratchets, the forward back. He's just a little wobbly. I wonder if the teeth in your ratchets, if there's like some kind of issue with that. Because um, yeah, he's holding up well right now, which is always good. Like you get on camera and you're like, "I'll show you how bad he falls over," and he's like, "Nope, not today." This is all good. Um, huh. So yeah, he has good articulation. The legs are a little weaker on mine, but neither are theirs. So maybe I have a fluke copy. The arms are really well articulated because they gave him these double elbows. Yep. So he can do a lot with his arms, which is cool because he can play with his chest compartment or whatever. That's kind of fun. You know, yeah, he moves pretty well. He poses as well as a box can. He's very boxy. Anna, the one thing I was kind of surprised about is, is I feel like the um, the leg articulation could be a little bit better, um, you know, notwithstanding the fact that yours is loose. But like that was the one thing that I kind of was worried that you were gonna not like. Um, it's like yeah, it's, it's like this, it's Lucas. Close enough, but it's not. You know, I would rather have a ninety. This is probably about a sixty. It's, you know, the leg articulation, I didn't really get a chance to not like the leg articulation because I do find the hollowness in the legs so distracting for me. So it was kind of a done deal. I already knew going into it I wasn't going to like the legs no matter how well they moved, but, which is fine. I mean, again, you know? like, this is the one thing I don't understand is, is, like, you somehow see the hole in there and you're like, oh, my God. But, like, you you totally cannot see it. Like, there's oh, like there's nowhere, like, it, it covers, like, I think it covers it up really well. Bro. But I guess if you know that it's there, you're like. This is a hang-up of mine, and it's totally fine. Like, I still like the figure overall. I think it's fine. Yeah. I'm actually going to join Anna's crusade on this one. I think the hole in this one it is pretty distracting. It's just really big. It's a lot. It's, it's just a big really bigger. Big. And it may not even be the hole. It's that from the way I pose it, because I, I don't pose mine you know, directly straight. They're kind of off a little bit dynamic. Yeah. But you can see the end of the knee. And I mean, I the thing it that's it a little different with... There's more there. So the thing that's a little different with this figure is like kind of the way that the legs move. Like, yeah. so when you're, when you're flipping it, it flips like this, like you can't flip it the other way. So like if you're trying, and that was the one thing I thought Anna would not like is, is that you, you cannot like rotate it in. You can only rotate it out. And so, yep. um, but then when you rotate it out like that, of course you can see the inside of right. the, the legs or whatever. So, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, again, someone's probably going to make some kind of filler to, 
you know, like if I you're figure. really bunchy, kind of, um, kind of thing. Um, if I decide to keep him, I'll get it. So yeah. it doesn't kill the figure for me or anything, but it it is a little bit distracting. Yeah. It's all his weapons go on top. Oops. He's got half of his missile. His missile splits into two, so he can have a little gun. I say little gun. This gun is enormous. And then he can have his vile shoulder cannon missile. Try to look like a cool guy. Lots of accessories, lots of weapons. Oh, and the little um, missile thingies go on the sides of his legs. But yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, overall, the guy's going to look pretty fantastic on the shelf just because, yeah, I mean, if sure. you look at all the paint apps, like, I mean, I think that that's, that's the thing that, like, they really spent a fair amount of time. Like, I mean, like, if you look at the legs, like, all the detailing on there, um, you know, with the blue and the silver, and the yellow uh, accents, and then, like, I mean, there's not ton of paint on the figure but where it is is like pretty amazing and like the the chest as well like the chest is done really nice and i don't know i mean i just you know going back to um uh titan's return and power of the primes or whatever and we got those garbage stickers all over it I like i'm like thank god they didn't put this thing out then because that's what we got and I would have hated the figure because I would have had these stickers that were peeling off, you know, from it. Like, as is, I mean, I think that it's, you know, like, this is, you know, I don't really have any connection to Double Dealer. So, like, getting this is, like, perfect for me. Like, I don't need a better version than this. I prefer him to the bigger, hollower figures that we've gotten in the past for leaders. Like, this is definitely better than that. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think I prefer him to the more, um, you know, smaller figure with a bunch of parts that we've been getting recently as well. Like this is a, this is a good use of a leader mold. Right. I agree. I do have one critique of the power stuff. master system. I and better the same one. Is it that if you don't push Knox head forward in uh, square mode, he doesn't fit in the compartment? No, it He's isn't star, that. Actually. It knock fits it. Knock fits it totally fine. I think it's because he's a complete square. But Scar, because it's the bat mode, has that yes. up top, so it mm. doesn't fit in as securely. I can totally you see can, that. But you can you can push Scar's head forward just a little bit in cassette mode, and he stays in there just fine now. So you just gotta, that makes gotta sense. finagle a little bit. No, my problem is that this the compartment doesn't actually fit flush to his chest. Oh. When you have it flipped around to show the guy. Me. Me. See, that, that bugs me. Yeah. It's just like, it doesn't tab in or anything. Yeah, it does have these tabby bits where you would think that there would be tabs. But there aren't. Yeah. I guess that's annoying. But eh, eh, it stays up. the front, he just plays fine. If you see from the side at all, it's a little gappy. But, yeah. you know. Again, did you really plan to pose him like that? Or would you rather have him hanging out? With his little robot friend, I'm more likely to pose him hanging out with his little robot friend. I haven't decided yet. It's cool to actually be able to use the feature, though. You know, plug that engine in and actually have a power master. We haven't gotten a legit power master in like, your lifetime. It's probably true. Uh, mm -hmm. I I like him having his little friends though out with him. Everyone loves little friends. Yeah, and then he gets to impersonate Soundwave. One guy at a time. <laughs> Can't have both out. So, and I know, like, originally you would kind of criticize this figure because you thought it was too blocky yeah. and, and and all that. Like, now that you've had the figure in hand, do you still feel that way? Or do you, like, are you glad that it looks more like this. That's more blocky. So to probably a lot of people, this is going to sound really preposterous, but with my criticisms of the figure originally, I thought, you know, I'm definitely not going to get it. But then I thought about like the similarities to arguments about things like body type diversity and how I literally was disliking the figure because it was a blocky robot man instead of the more like lift agile type robots that I prefer so I was like, you know, it actually looks like a good blocky robot man, so I gotta give it a try. 
So I decided to go ahead and get it. Plus, I had enough Amazon points that it cost me zero of my real dollars. Yeah. So that also helped me make the decision to get one. Um, and, you know, like, my opinion on my problems with it really haven't changed. Like, that bird mode, I could never display. Um, the truck mode is fine. Um, and the robot mode is very blocky, and I don't like the legs. So I'd say I haven't really changed my yeah. feelings about it, but I think I have been able to appreciate the overall package a little bit better. Like, I just kind of thought, like, it's nice to have something different on my shelf. Yeah. And he's only different, and I'm going to make this argument, because to me, he kind of feels like a time capsule in a way that he really is cashing in on looking like the G1 toy so much that he almost doesn't feel like he comes from the current line. He feels like he took a time traveling system from like 15 years ago, but updated himself to look like a modern figure and articulation and paint and stuff. So it's just, it's interesting to me. So I feel like you could sneak him into like older universe and he would look right until you noticed his ankles and um, wrists and everything. <laughs> like, move. And you'd be like what's going on here? He's articulated. But if you didn't move him, you'd think he belonged. It's like, it's kind of a neat vein. Like, like I really just can't like, this probably isn't a figure that's made with me in mind, but it's a good figure. I can say it that way. Yeah, I mean, I think that in general, like, all of the figures, um, like, they've went away, like, and and when I say they, like, everyone has went away from, like, kind of updated designs, it's in neoclassic or whatever, like, they've all kind of, like, you know, we want it to be accurate to the source material, whether or not the source material is the toy, or if it's the cartoon, that's kind of, like, what it seems like people want or like not not everyone but like it seems like more people want that than you know the the neo kind of kind of style like um you know i don't know i mean i like both uh you know but it it just kind of depends on like how they do it i guess um if it's done well in in either one like i i like it um but i mean i think ultimately you know the question is is like does it look nice and is it a fun toy um, you know, and I think with this, like with all the accessories it comes with and all that, um, it's, it's pretty fun. And I think that the transformation isn't horrible, um, but it is like different than the other stuff. Like it's not just a, you know, flip two things and you've got it. Like, you know, there is a, at least a little bit you have to do. Um, so, I mean, I think from that respect, like it's, it, it's nice, um, does a lot of things right. The transformation yeah. is the right kind of complex. Watch the knees. Fun. Yeah, something can happen with the knees. I've heard. Just be careful. Don't don't try to force anything. They uh, lock into different positions for different modes, so just make sure you're in the right place at the right time. Luckily, pay, the hardest. Just pay attention. That's all. The hardest position to get the knees in is for the bird. So if you never go back to bird mode again. Don't have to worry about it. There you go. For me. I did like one thing to really note of this figure that just kind of amuses me is that it simultaneously does gaps perfectly. Like these wrist gaps is like the best implementation of gaps in a like generations figure that I've seen. Like they're there. There's no covering where the wrist go or where the hand goes but they just don't show up because of where they're placed because they're in the back and it's black plastic with shadows. So you don't Mm -hmm. notice it as much, but at the same time, it also does gaps in the worst way possible on the legs where it's a color of plastic where it shows up really bad. And it's a big enough area that it shows up really strongly. So I just find that an amusing contrast. (laughs) <laughs> so, so the one thing I'll say about the arms, like I kind of wish, and, and like I, I'm with you, Anna. Like I know that you, you know, a lot of times are really annoyed by the way that they do the hands and and the wrists, where it kind of like you know folds in on itself. These are really nice, and I like I kind of wish they would just do this with every figure, yes. where like you said that there is like you can spin the the wrist, you know, so there is wrist articulation. And like you said, it flips, you know, 
uh, in, you know, into itself. So assuming that you can't spend the extra, you know, whatever it costs to put a tab there so that it, you know, flips open or whatever. Like, I, I do agree with you. Um, and, and I do think it would be nice, you know, if they could implement this system for, you know, the other figures. Because, like, again, it's a criticism. I Like, it doesn't bother me as much as it bothers you. It still right. slightly bothers me, though. But yeah, like, I just, yeah, I agree. This is, this is much like the way they implemented this. I agree is, is much nicer than what they have. Some of the other ones. I think he has second best rest. I think prime here has the best rest because he has okay. the swivel inside and covers. that go on to it, but then I think double dealer does it well too. Like since they couldn't, like you said, couldn't afford the covers or whatever. In this case, I think this works. Yep. I like it. I agree with that. I'm just waiting for us to get run amok in. <laughs> Cause that's like, I feel like, like, are you even bothering with run amok and runabout? I, I have like really good nostalgia of those figures from childhood. So I want them, but I know I'm going to hate it so much. I know. Like, I feel like you're going to be like, no. Cause again, I think that figure, if I could remember on the, um, uh, what I've seen from the pictures, the, it has the arms that move in, so it's going to have, like, a huge gap on the inside. And I think it has gaps in the... Well, I can't remember. Are the gaps on the side of the legs or the back of the legs? Or both, oh. I guess. Kind of. There's a lot of I gaps in that figure. It's pretty gappy. It's pretty gappy. I don't know if I'll be able to bring myself to buy both. Like, I think I might get one and just be like, oh, it's so bad. I just be happy. I mean, with I feel it. like again, like you were saying, that Runabout is going to be the better one to get because it's going to be all black, and so yeah. then it's that's the one I have. You know, it's, it's, so it's really the one I should get. Yeah, just Runabout's coming first, right? Yeah, yeah. I think Presumably. Runabout is more than likely going to be some type of exclusive. Um, because there was a rumor. We'll find out on the Transformers Tuesday this month. There, well, that's not necessarily. Sense. If it's a store exclusive, that's not Big Bad or whatever. I don't oh, know if there's other exclusives know. that are still coming out. Like, I know Walgreens hasn't done theirs, though. I don't know if that's going to be Smoke or uh, Blue Streak or uh, or what. But, but yeah, there's Maybe there's a rumor we'll that, like, Tuesday. Earthrise is only going to be through Wave 3. and uh, But we're just going to get a crap ton of exclusives. So it seems like we're probably still going to get the same amount of figures that we would get. Is just that instead of it being in a normal wave, so, um, you know, but as we'll find out, it'd be interesting to see though if like Kingdom really is coming out in like December or January, like, and we still haven't really seen any of the figures from it, like, just such a weird, a weird thing. Actual surprises in 2020, come on, right. we don't do that right. for toys anymore. <laughs> I was legit surprised by Tiger Track and Rotor Storm, so I, I think that Hasbro could surprise me again. Good. Yeah, I was surprised with those two. And happy with one of them. I love them both. None, none I, of us mentioned it. His face is really good. The his end. face is really good. It's blue. It's a cool face. He looks mean and helpful at the same time, as he should. That's his aesthetic. So... Recommendations, would you guys say get this figure? Yeah, I would say, like, I I would get it. I mean, there's not a lot of leaders coming out, you know, other than, like, I would I'd rather get this than, like, say if you have $50 and you're like, should I get Earthrise, or I'm sorry, the Dead Prime, or this? I think I'd rather have this than the Dead Prime. But I'd rather have the live prime than this. the mold. Right, I'd rather have the live prime. Like that mold is really good overall. I'm just saying that, like, if you know, whatever, like the recent leaders that have come out, that uh, you know, I think he's pretty good. He's really what you see is what you get. Like pictures will not lie to you on this figure. So I think it's if you really like the aesthetic, 
then he's a good figure to get. Like, if you've been thinking, like, I really want a blocky G1 style guy who moves well and is expressionate, you know, like the picture I made for today's um, show, like, he is expressionate. He can do poses as well. It's pretty cool. But he is just as blocky as he looks. So I'd say, you know, get him if you either like the aesthetic or if you have nostalgia for Double Dealer because he'll, he'll work well for that because he's the same figure but updated. And otherwise, you know, maybe consider putting your toy money elsewhere. That's what I would say. I mean, I think overall, like, if you're <laughs> if you're thinking about, like, saving up or whatever, like, I mean, the Skylinks, like, I would 100% get that like, first. I mean, I, I like, that is a really good figure. And we haven't reviewed Scorponok yet either, but, I mean, that's a pretty slick figure, too. So if, not if it's one them, of those things where is yeah. if money is... You know, like if you if you're going over your Transformers budget and you only have a certain thing, like I would probably I would get those first. Like honestly, those are two of my favorite figures of the line. Um, you know, other than like the Earthrise Primes are really good too. But no, that's um, a really good point. If Skipping Ham lets you go get either Skylinks or Scorponok, I would definitely do that. So those are better. Now, if you're like I Catherine and you're assembling a mercenary faction, I think that this is definitely one yeah. that you need to get. Then. Then get two. <laughs> <laughs> get one, okay. Catherine. Only Christian in. needs two. <laughs> I was really glad that I got both of these at just slightly below retail. Yeah, I think uh, Amazon, like, like, he's actually been hey, at on sale. for a while. Yeah. Um, but not anymore. I checked today. He's, he's at retail Amazon now. Wasn't it? I think Walmart had him up for a bit at like 30 bucks, which who knows, mm. you know, when they will actually deliver on that kind of stuff. Yeah, they did. Got, not yet. So. But uh, I got one through the Target BOGO sale back in February, and it just mm-hmm. took until now to arrive. And I got one from Amazon for when it was 43 So oh, I was happy with that price. If I had to pay 100 bucks for both of them, Eh, I pay fifty bucks each. Eh, like the other guy said, if skipping this one lets you get Skylinks or Scorponok, uh, d- definitely do that. But I think you'll like this one too. He's cool. Man, um, I tell you what, that like Target. I, I wonder if those dates are actually going to be legit. Like when they ship the stuff out, because I mean that's coming up here pretty pretty quick. It's a couple weeks away, yeah, right? More weeks. Yeah. So uh, I'll be pretty excited because I <laughs> get a huge you know, amount of toys. They line uh, up with the pulse dates, so... Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. I feel better about Target. Like, cause they, like you said, I've already gotten figures shipped from that sale, like, as they've come in. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the Studio Series. So, the... Um, yeah, ho- hopefully those dates are legit and whatnot. Like, Walmart, on the other hand, it's like, I don't even know why I even order from Walmart online. I know. I really want red figures. That's why. They still have not updated my delivery date for Blaster. I feel like ultimately, Anna, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to go get you the red figures, like in That's the store when I go, when when I go, like pick up some groceries at Walmart or whatever. Like and I'll be like, oh hey, look at this, it's in the store, and then you'll cancel your order, and then I'll just throw it over in a box on your porch or whatever. It's either going to be that or I'm going to (laughs) DoorDash some red figures. That's a good idea. There you go. So, all right. Well, um, do we have any other final thoughts before we wrap on this guy? No, this is fun. It's a good figure to talk about. It's a good figure to mess with. There's a lot to it. Yeah. All right, well, thank you to uh, everyone in the chat. Randall, Catherine, I think Tony was in there earlier, so appreciate it, guys. And... Yeah, thank you, friends. Oh, yeah, my, my purpose in life is to get Anna figures. That's probably <laughs> true. <laughs> it's like I, I, I'm her uh, plastic crack dealer. So. My collection has gone for, like, I think I maybe had, like, a fourth as many figures as I do now when I first moved to Kansas, which is when I started meeting Lucas. So, yeah. I do what I can. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. (laughs) So, everyone needs more robots in their life, though, so. 
That's true. That's right. Absolutely true. All right. Well, uh, so last night on TFYLP, we talked about our favorite uh, Transformers animated series over the years, and Don made a surprise appearance on the show. So that was that was pretty fun. Of course, he came with technical difficulties. So, uh, but uh, but yeah. So he he dropped in, and uh, so if you want to check that out, and then also uh, Mr. Star Scream had his. Uh, the last episode of uh, the season of season one for TF Talk News that dropped the other day as well. So if you want to check both of those out, um, that was a lot of fun. Uh, no Ash My Wallet this week. It'll be next week. And then who knows what Rick's doing on Cut the Tape. So it's always a surprise. So anyway. So all right. Well, thanks everyone. If you want to uh, continue the chat, join us in Discord. Uh, the link should be up on our Twitter account and um, also on the YouTube. Uh, should be a link as well in there. So, all right. Well, thanks everyone, and we will see you next week. Night.